other nations. So God determines the boundaries of the nations. God determines in his own time and his own way where people live. Um, Israel went into the promised land, had to remove others who were there. The promise, the dictate of God, this fulfilled the will of his people. It doesn't matter who got there first. What matters is God's will. And that's important for people to understand history. Now, it might not be liked by people, might not be popular, might not be appreciated by everyone, but it is a fact of Scripture. And it's a fact we need to understand this whole issue of immigration today, that boundaries do matter. They do. God sets the boundaries. Um, so, hopefully I've made my point clear on that. Yesterday was Valentine's Day. Here in America, we celebrate it openly. Other parts of the world, not so much. Out of USA Today, Pakistanis defy Valentine's Day ban with hearts, flowers, and love. Out of Lahore, Pakistan, I've had some friends uh, that are friends of mine on Facebook that subscribe to my YouTube videos from Pakistan that have told me, hey, you know, we gave out chocolates and we weren't supposed to and we could get in trouble and the country said, you know, we're not supposed to do this. Out of USA Today, uh... So many Pakistanis are outraged over a court's ban on celebrating Valentine's Day because it's considered un-Islamic. They vowed to press forward with hearts, flowers, candy, and love. They said, I'm still going ahead with my Valentine's Day plan in defiance of this unrealistic ban despite the consequences. So un-Islamic. What's un-Islamic about Valentine's Day? What, there's no love in Islam? Well, you tell me. I mean, how much love can there truly be if a father can kill his daughter, an honor killing, for dishonoring the family or for converting to Christianity? Is that really love? Is it love to want to kill everyone who doesn't think the way you think? Is that love? I can tell you they don't have peace either because they don't know the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, God in flesh, the Savior of the world, the Messiah that was prophesied, the King of Kings, the one who's coming back again, not that fake Isa that they read about in the Quran. Banning Valentine's Day because it's un-Islamic, and yet so many Democrats in this country want to have Sharia law in America. Really? If only you knew what you were getting into. Um, out of the Christian Post, Islamic radicals who massacred Christians on Easter Sunday killed 14 in Lahore bombing. Speaking of Pakistan, a radical Islamist group that killed 73 Christians and Muslims in Lahore last Easter has carried out a bombing in the Pakistani capital last night, killing 14 people, injuring 59 others. A motorcycle... Suicide bomber rammed into protesters. They need our prayers. They need as much help as we can possibly give them. Out of Fox News, Russia. Russia sends spy ship near U.S. coast, deploys banned missiles at home. Russia, that bear that Daniel 7.5 speaks of that was told to go devour much flesh seems to be stepping up and preparing to do so these days. Very, very interesting. Watching what's going on with Russia, there was a Russian jet that buzzed a U.S. destroyer, came within 200 yards of it. Wow. Who knows what we're going to see next? Out of CNN, Russia deploys missile in apparent treaty violation. Russia deployed a cruise missile. In a treaty violation, a senior military official told CNN yesterday, this is just the latest in a string of Russian provocations in the early days of the Trump administration. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You probably heard about that dam out in California. They've had to evacuate some 190,000 residents. Yahoo says dam crisis is wake-up call for aging California water system. I saw a story yesterday where the... Uh, governor of California declared a, uh, a 
a, a crisis. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a, a natural disaster. And who is he coming to ask help from? Yeah, the very one he was trying to run from. You know, you hear all this talk of California wanting to secede from the Union because they don't want to be under a Trump administration. So who's the first one they run to asking for help, asking for money, asking for all kinds of things? It's Donald Trump. They go to the president, please help us, please give us money, please give us food, give us power, give us this, give us that. Sometimes it takes something like that. In the very same way, sometimes it takes trouble and sorrow to bring us back to God, right? How about this? Out of ReviewJournal.com, outlawing microchipping humans not so far-fetched, says Nevada Senator. State Senator Becky Harris has a bill to prohibit forced microchipping of people. She says it's not as far-fetched as it seems because it happens in places all around the world. Um, <coughs> isn't that interesting? I have for years believed that this RFID chip could very well be the instrument used in bringing about the mark of the beast. I'm not saying the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. I'm just saying it could be the instrument used to bring that prophecy to fruition. Um, because clearly it talks about in the right hand or in the forehead. And when they inject this, this RFID chip, they inject it usually right here in the skin between the thumb and the forefinger, right here. Um, so she's coming out with a bill to prohibit microchipping people against their um, wishes that we can't force microchip upon people. Isn't that interesting? To me, that's very biblical. Um, you have to look into this too, because right now there's an estimated 30,000 to 50,000 microchips that have been sold globally with the expressed use of putting them in humans. It's being used in Belgium and Sweden to identify employees. They can unlock doors or copy machines or pay for lunch just by waving their hand. <clears throat> of course, militaries around the world put it in soldiers so they can identify them and locate them when they need to. Very interesting what's happening these days. Out of the Kansas City Star, no designer babies but gene editing to avoid disease? Maybe. They're messing around here. Designer babies, they're able to alter heredity and fight genetic diseases. They're able to do genome editing and it's transforming biological research. Who knows what they might do next? Man playing God, it seems. Wow. You know, I have to say, I think God has us all right where he wants us. We are exactly where we're supposed to be when it comes to serving God when it comes to following after him. In Genesis 40, verses 14 and 15, But think on me when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. Joseph was forgotten. Joseph, he, he was playing this waiting game. He was in this prison, this dungeon, for who knows how long. He had been sold into slavery by his brothers. But then when the wait was over, he was promoted to be basically second in command to Pharaoh himself. Hmm. Um, so God made a way to provide Joseph his freedom again. God gave Joseph power and authority. He gave him a significance and a joy unlike anything he had ever experienced before that. You see, God can do the same thing with you if you'll just remain with him in heart, in word, in deed, during your times of detours. You know, it seems like detours come into our lives all the time where, you know, you think you're going this way and all of a sudden something happens and you get 
off on this other road, uh, not going the way you were going? How do you know when you're getting close to coming out of a detour and you start heading into that time of promotion, that time of blessing like Joseph did? I mean, that would be when God um, does on your detour what you could never do on your own. You know, when, you, when you're in those times, when you're on another road, it seems, or, you know, something comes up, there, there's a fork in the road, and maybe you take the wrong one. Maybe you're trying to find your way back to the main road, and, or you're just trying to figure out what's going on. You're not able to get off that road. God won't let you escape. But then there comes a time when he shows you a sign. Maybe it's a turn that opens up back to the main road and you take it. You know, a lot of times this is done through a way you had tried to do on your own and you you were unable to succeed. Joseph, he, he tried to get that cupbearer to remember him. You know, he, he asked him to remember him. He hoped he would remember him, but the cupbearer forgot him completely. Only God did that very precise thing a few years later. He caused the cupbearer to remember Joseph. You know, God is the one who's in control. So no matter what you're going through right now, whether you're on the right road and you're walking with God and you're serving, or maybe you're on a little detour, something happened, you know, uh, uh, maybe something caused you to turn away for a moment or to detour onto this other road, whatever it might have been, loss of a loved one, or... Um, Maybe a divorce, death in the family of some sorts, a loss of a job. Sometimes these little detours can distract us and get our focus off Christ. But let me make sure that I'm very clear. There's no one else that can save you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God the Father but by me, John 14, 6. In Acts 4, Verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. Jesus came to earth to be our Savior. Because of our sin, it separates us from having fellowship with God. Jesus came to take care of the sin problem. You see, people don't like to hear that they're sinners. You know, I've heard all sorts of people say, oh, well, you know, he's really a good person. You know, she's really a good person. Jesus said no one is good, but God only. So for us to think in any way, shape, or form that we're good at all is basically us deceiving ourselves. You know, we might think we're good compared to, you know, Charles Manson or some, some other uh, mass murdering kind of lost soul, but we need to stop comparing ourselves to others. We need to really start comparing ourselves to Jesus Christ, and then we might see how extremely far we fall short. No one wants to hear they're a sinner. No one wants to hear that they're lost in need of a Savior. People want to believe, oh, I'm self-sufficient. I'm a pretty good person. I, I don't kill anyone. I don't steal. I don't cuss, I don't commit adultery, but the Bible explains this in further detail. You know, in its simplest terms, the message of the gospel from Scripture could come down to two words, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, the Father sent his only begotten son, to be the savior of the world. This was promised, and it was provided in Jesus Christ alone. No one else. Only Jesus can save you. Muhammad can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Scientology can't save you. The Pope can't save you. The president, the prime minister, the king can't save you. Only Jesus can save you. There's no other way to God except through Jesus Christ. See, the salvation spoken of in this verse 
includes everyone. No one is excluded. Jesus didn't just die for a select few. He died for you. He died for me. He died for anyone who accepts him. Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. And it's God's desire that every man, woman, and child be